Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today for this uh, closed webinar on uh, the EU Green Deal, uh, focusing on decarbonizing smart airport and port cities and regions. Uh, as we know, uh, right now, this is the hot topic, uh, and uh, we would like today to present you different case studies uh, and to learn from each other or about decarbonization in, uh, in, uh, in airport and port cities and regions. Uh, to start, I will give the floor to uh, Dr. Uh, Delia Dimitriou. Uh, she is the lead author on the IPCC uh, report, uh, working on mitigation transport and aviation. Delia, thank you very much for being today. Good morning, dear colleagues. We are all, uh, we will talk today about decarbonizing agenda in cities, airports and ports. We are all aware that climate change is now affecting every country on every continent. Acting today for tomorrow is an essential policy to trigger affordable, scalable solutions which are available to cleaner, more resilient economies. Considering decarbonizing transport, a sector which is at the heart of the economic growth and globalization, will provide answers to existing knowledge, gaps, and barriers to implement or scale up several identified solutions. To decarbonize transport, several steps need to be undertaken. Thus, the actions involved in the process, uh, the actors involved in the process will need to identify and implement low carbon innovation solution, set up a portfolio of best practices to be transferable, scaling up, and deployable from place to place, particularly when we are talking about decarbonizing Europe, which will be from place to regions and then a larger region to cover the entire Europe. In the present pandemic situation, although traffic has decreased dramatically, both ports and airports are playing an important role of multimodal hubs where goods will move around. Two aspects are important in decarbonizing transport, at least this is my feeling being a researcher in uh, low carbon mobility. Working on place-based solutions that are scalable, deployable and transferable and involving a large variety of stakeholders, particularly end users. The projects related to decarbonizing transport are not research and innovation anymore, more and more they are innovation action. So we need to involve several actors particularly the, those who will scale up and use our solutions. For instance, if the example of local solutions, maybe uh, renewable energy sources, waste to biofuels, because waste is a local based solution. We can find waste everywhere. We need technologies to transform waste to biofuels. Or access and uh, multimodal uh, connectivity from city to airport or port. This multimodal connectivity will differ from city to city. So these local solutions will need to be implemented, but when we need to transfer them to other places, they will be adjusted and uh, will lead to deployable solutions. However, any activity is important today to decarbonize Europe. Any small solutions will contribute to the uh, decarbonizing agenda. For today, according to the agenda, very useful and challenging topics are uh, going to be debated. So I wish you a successful event, but mostly I wish you in future a fruitful uh, activities in finding and implementing the best deployable solutions. Thank you and good luck. Thank you very much, Delia, for uh, the, your welcome speech. Uh, from our side as well, we would like to introduce Director General Sergio Allegre from Airport Regions Council uh, to, to present uh, the state of the art as well. Sergio, you have the floor. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, Delia. And sorry for uh, this, or maybe it's good for you that you cannot see me because I have a technical problem today. Uh, thank you to I see here in my screen to the 52 participants already that we are sharing this as Delia appointed, Dr. Delia appointed, uh, a very uh, important and interesting uh, webinar. I think important because of the theme we are dealing, you know, Green Deal is here and is not going to live for the good and for the bad, depending on your opinion. For my opinion, 
an ASC opinion, what is more important than mine is for sure is for good. And important for the moment, because everyone is aware uh, that uh, the European Union has um, uh, published finally, and more or less uh, as it was um, planned, the, the call of the, green, the EU Green Deal, number 5A, airports and B, uh, ports. <clears throat> yes, uh, the vast majority of you, you know a little bit about what we do and who we are, but let, let me just take one minute to explain to you that ASC, Operations Council, is uh, the 26 years already uh, organization in Europe, and but with members out of Europe as well, that uh, of uh, airport of regions and cities that uh, they have uh, an airport, an international airport in their territories. Uh, our wish is to maximize all the positive aspects to have an airport in your territory, such a, a huge infrastructure whatever the size of it it is, and to minimize the negative impact. For sure, uh, the green call is dealing with this, the, the environmental uh, negative impacts. And I think we are in a very good way. And I think all of us airports and regions, there are time, there's a lot of time we are working on that. We, are being, we have been pushed by our societies, what I think is uh, the best way that society works, when the citizens, men and women, take the role to ask uh, the regions, the politicians, the uh, authorities to move in one direction. I think this is clear. But <clears throat> I think as, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, as Delia, Dr. Delia pointed very well, uh, we need knowledge. It's important to know that we want to go somewhere, that this somewhere is clear for everyone, that we have the economic re resources, but money it's not as you know already everything not in personal life not in professional life so that's why we welcome really much this call from the european commission we thank the dg research and innovation to be today with us to explain more about this call and the goals that the european commission has in mind not only what they have written but is quite clear if not what is behind that because it really we need best practices and we have to improve and we have to go a few steps ahead. In that sense, you can come with ASC, not only to prepare webinars, if not to collaborate uh, with uh, all the uh, participants that they want to have consortiums and to be ready to present a submission. And last but not least, I would really would like to thank Alexandra uh, Kovrig and uh, Elena Maximova, because they have been the ones who have been uh, working hard to get all of us here in this, uh, uh, I, I hope and I wish, and I'm completely sure, uh, successful webinar. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Thank you very much, Sergio, for the kind words. Uh, indeed, uh, this was an initiative of Airport Regions Council, but we had plenty of help behind. Uh, thank you uh, to our core organizers, uh, Police Network, uh, CPMR as well, so the Conference of Peripheral Maritime Regions, as well as Cluj, uh, the City, Airport and University. Thank you very much for your involvement and for uh, contributing to this webinar. Uh, we will now uh, give uh, the floor to the European Commission, who kindly uh, accepted our, our invitation for today's webinar. Uh, we have today uh, Johan Blondel from uh, Future Urban and Mobility Systems at the European Commission from uh, DG Research and Innovation. Uh, Johan, thank you very much, and you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize on behalf of my colleague, Wana Bodron. Uh, she will join a little bit later, um, but she got called away uh, for uh, an offer she could not refuse, as they call it. Um, so please, if you could move to uh, the following slide. Um, you have no doubt heard of um, the, uh, the State of the Union presentation just a few weeks ago that there is a very strong emphasis and interest on uh, the Green Deal, which is really at the heart of um, the activities of, uh, of Europe for the years to come. And the targets have been sharpened even more in the sense that we aim to cut the greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030. 
So one way that we are going to try and get to this target is through the topic uh, that I'm going to uh, clarify for you today. If you could move to the next slide, it uh, shows you the, the structure of um, the Horizon 2020 call. And you see that there are boundaries with area 1.2 on um, climate neutral and socially innovative cities. But uh, this topic falls uh, in area five, sustainable and smart mobility. The following slide here shows you the full title and I would advise you really to go to the, um, the hub or the portal and um, inspect the full text of uh, the proposal because it provides much more detail than what I uh, am going to present you here. Um, the following slide shows you a bit of the policy context. So as I already mentioned, uh, we have the Green Deal, which points out uh, in a very clear message that transport should become drastically less polluting. Aside from that, there are specific references to the fact that we should accelerate the shift to sustainable and smart mobility and also ramp up production and deployment of sustainable alternative transport fuels. Furthermore, there are uh, specific references also to, sorry, if you could just go one back. Thank you. Uh, there are specific references to aviation and shipping and uh, airports and ports are really singled out um, in, the, uh, in the Green Deal communication. Also from a sectoral and policy perspective, there is already a lot of work being done. Uh, there is good decarbonization in road and rail through electrification, but aviation and shipping jointly um, constitute 27% of the transport greenhouse gas emissions, and both are rising. So there is an urgent need to, uh, to act there. Aside from the uh, research activities, there's also going to be further policy actions uh, to support uh, the further deployment of uh, green and sustainable aviation and waterborne transport uh, modalities. And we are looking for a significant and immediate impact by 2025-2030 uh, timeframe. So indeed, on the next slide, you see the targeted impacts uh, for the, the present topic. And the first one is uh, to look at the accelerated deployment of sustainable alternative fuels. So this could be biofuels, green hydrogen, or other uh, sustainable fuels, but also electromobility, not just for the aviation and shipping, but also for the other transport modes um, linking to the airports and the ports. A second aspect in parallel is to ensure the clean energy or fuel production, distribution and supply. So really to um, cover the entire supply chain for energy towards uh, transport um, at the airport or the port. The third aspect is to uh, go for zero emission ports, of course, net zero emission. Um, port and airport operations and improved air quality. And in linking uh, to this air quality, um, we need to reduce the emissions both for aviation shipping, but also the multimodal mobility for both passengers and freight. Aside from the pure transport aspects, there's also energy efficient and smart operations and buildings, the logistics and to modal connections and modal shifts but also linking to the cities that are usually in the vicinity of airports and ports. Uh, we're looking for better city integration, urban mobility and reduced uh, emissions. So what is the topic looking for in terms of activities? Well, first of all, it's very important to note that we are looking for demonstrations, real life, but also large scale demonstrations of green airports, maritime and inland ports uh, across Europe. So what should be covered is in the three top bullet points that is really the core of, uh, of the topic uh, and its foreseen activities. So pilot or demo plans of zero emission energy production and supply, but also then the supply systems, the storage, distribution, 
and all of the associated infrastructure for aircraft, ships, and other vehicles and purposes. So that could be um, um, small transport vehicles, uh, cranes, what have you. Um, the fourth bullet point shows you the integration with uh, green and smart operations and logistics, um, innovative construction, infrastructure, uh, and so on and so forth. The fifth bullet point um, points towards digitalization. So we are looking also for uh, activities on smart tools um, for the optimization of the traffic flows into and out of the airports to and from the city and also for intermodal connections and modal shifts because all of these digital uh, tools will also have um, an impact in reducing the overall emissions. And then finally, um, we're asking also to look into the non-technological framework conditions like uh, government, uh, governance and investment analyses, because these are very important in replicating and then further rolling out um, these demonstrations across Europe. So, Summing up, these are the key features uh, to be addressed in, in the topic. Uh, they need to be sustainable, smart, multimodal, and covering some other aspects. So the sustainability aspect, as I already mentioned, the green energy production and supply using uh, clean energy, but also different uh, fuels um, that you see listed there. The topic should address smart uh, activities, so connected and automated uh, vehicles, cranes, but also dynamic traffic optimization um, into and out of the airport and linking to the cities, uh, smart operations, logistics and uh, model shifts. The multimodal aspect is very important, so not only to cover the pure aviation, maritime and inland waterway transport, but also linking to road, rail and multimodal connections and modal shifts. So really, um, we ask you to look at the, the overall transport system uh, to address door-to-door -door multimodal mobility for passengers and freight. And then finally, uh, there's the aspect of green logistics, infrastructure, energy efficient buildings, very important if you are looking for net zero emission, uh, linking to the city's urban environment and urban mobility, but also taking into account biodiversity, circular economy and effective land, sea or river use. As, uh, this slide shows you the specific conditions for each of the areas. So area A is uh, the green airports. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, we are looking for demonstrations, so TRL 6 or above, to address all of the four headings that you see there. Under the transport point, um, it should address, first of all, the three aspects A, B and C that are refer referenced in the text. And those cover, um, first of all, the access and the multimodal connection to and from the airport. Uh, but also the air side operations, so linking the terminal uh, to the, the aircraft and the land side operations, so the logistics and, and the energy and fuel uh, distribution across uh, the airport. Aside from that, at least three of the six items that you find in the text uh, should be addressed. Then for terminal and energy, um, at least two of the four uh, bullet points have to be covered and then cross-cutting at least three of the seven need to be addressed. For the area B, um, of course, it's still TRL 6. The scope needs to address at least six aspects and the key one is bullet point number one, which um, addresses the low emission energy supply and the production at the ports, plus its uh, supply, storage, and use. So this one is imperative and has to be in. And aside from that, another five of the remaining seven bullet points need to be addressed. And it's also important to note that consortia should include at least one inland port, so not uh, purely the, the sea ports. Uh, 
the final slide here shows you the call topic uh, modalities. So as it is a demonstration, um, it is an innovation action aiming at higher TRL. We are looking for projects um, with a duration of four to five years. The consortia should consist of one leading lighthouse port or airport and then maximum uh, three fellow airports or ports where the activities can be replicated and, uh, and further uh, demonstrated at different scales. Um, there is overall 100 million euros uh, available uh, and as we have the, the intention of funding uh, at least two proposals per area, so at least two airports and two uh, green port uh, proposals. That means that um, the funding available per proposal is in the area of 15 to 25 million uh, euros. It's important to note that this is single stage, so it's, um, it's, it's one shot, and the call deadline is the 26th of uh, January, so um, the clock is ticking. I would again urge you to go uh, into the, um, the detailed uh, topic text because it provides uh, more information, for instance, on the foreseen budget split between the lighthouse and the fellow airports or the ports. So uh, please do have um, a very careful look at, at the full text. So thank you very much. This concludes my short introduction of. Uh, of this topic. Thank you very much, Johan, for the insightful presentation. Uh, I think this was extremely useful for the for all participants. Um, so, for your information, uh, we will be able to to engage further on with the commission in the panel discussion. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Uh, and Johan, I know that you have uh, another meeting in a couple of minutes, but thank you very much for for being uh, here with us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much and good luck to all participants. Thank you very much. Uh, we will continue now uh, with, uh, with um, climate neutral and socially innovative cities. Uh, this will be uh, a session presented, uh, chaired by Polis Network. Uh, and uh, I'm pleased to give the floor to Ivo Kred, uh, Director of Policy and Projects uh, at Polis. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, I hope you can uh, see me well and hear me well. Um, I um, want to highlight in this uh, short, uh, my short introduction of the, uh, of, of the actual um, uh, city we want to present, bring forward in this regard, the city of Stockholm with Paul Fenton. Um, as a speaker, um, I would like to, to highlight the, um, the opportunity of the call topic uh, Green Deal 1.2 towards climate neutral and uh, socially innovative cities. Um, it's uh, very much welcomed by, by our network. Um, I'm working for Polis, a network of uh, 84 cities and regions working on transport innovation. Um, the call topic is, um, uh, is creating a facility, a large facility of 53 million euros uh, to get the uh, city's uh, mission going. And you might be aware of, of that. Uh, the city's mission is an, a new instrument under Horizon Europe, uh, which uh, as other missions will, uh, will focus um, research and innovation as well as investment um, towards goal that has been set by the, the EU and its stakeholders. And in this case, it is the goal to reach um, uh, climate neutral and smart cities. Um, a number of, um, yeah, of 100 cities at least that aim at climate neutrality. Um, so we, we very much support that. And I would like to highlight the, uh, the dimension of transport of urban mobility in, in this regard for this uh, concept. Um, the call text itself, which I'm not going to cite, but it, it's, it's very much open on uh, the uh, climate measures that will be taken by cities uh, to reach uh, climate neutrality. Uh, but we want to emphasize the importance of, um, of urban mobility. Um, urban mobility is a big contributor to pollution and hence is also a, one of the big 
sectors where solutions can be found. And what's interesting is that all solutions are actually on the table. We are talking about um, electric mobility, zero emissions uh, logistics, cycling, walking, collective travel, um, shared modes to uh, decrease the carbon footprint of urban mobility in our cities. Uh, urban mobility is also an important enabler for other sectors that have an impact on the climate. Um, local economy, um, which can be made more, more circular, um, more green, um, to name one of, one of them. But um, yeah, really, we, we think urban mobility is central in this whole uh, story. Um, the context specifies four actions that need to be taken by this facility. Um, the first one is uh, the, the establishment of climate action plans. And for that task, we actually have a really good contribution from the side of urban mobility, which is the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan. And there has been a lot of work on guidance on how to integrate uh, SUMPs, we call them, with um, sustainable energy and climate adaptation plans. Um, so the integration for climate action plans, the integration between the SUMP and the CCAP is, uh, is ready um, to go. A second uh, uh, activity in the call topic is the investment preparation. And also there, uh, SUMPs can contribute and urban mobility can contribute. In the last five years, uh, under um, three large uh, projects under Civitas 2020, a part of uh, Horizon 2020, um, about 250 cities have prepared an SUMP, uh, which is also an, an investment plan. So the, the plans on how to invest and where to invest in urban mobility are ready um, and can be facilitated by, by such an, uh, an, an, a project under the Green Deal 1.2 topic. Citizen engagement is a third topic. Um, where of course urban mobility is, is very close uh, to the citizen in if you do a survey on what is what is at the heart of citizens problems urban mobility and public space topics are almost uh, are always in the top three of, of items mentioned by citizens and finally um, there is the um, the task in the project uh, of developing pilots um, on uh, climate neutrality and socially social innovation uh, and also in urban mobility there there has been a lot and that's why I'm happy to have Paul in the in as the next speaker um, Paul is working for the city of uh, of Stockholm uh, which for our sector very interested interestingly has been a demonstrator in Civitas uh, Eccentric, which is an, a large innovation action um, looking at urban mobility innovation. Um, and Stockholm also has been a lighthouse project, a city in the uh, Grow Smarter um, Smart Cities and Communities Lighthouse program. Um, and Paul will explain what they have done in integrating the smart city concept and the urban mobility activities. Um, and I'll come back to Paul with a couple of questions after that he has uh, given his introduction. So Paul, the, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Ivo, and thank you to the organizers. Um, it's nice to get this invitation and talk about a call and a topic that we're very interested in. Um, we um, in Stockholm have worked in Civitas Eccentric and Grow Smarter to um, projects which can help maybe uh, frame some of the wider thinking we have about the um, the, your, the decarbonizing airports and ports call and also about the carbon neutral call. Um, we, in, we can take the next slide. In, in Civitas Eccentric then, uh, we are one of five cities. We're not the project coordinator. Um, it's a large consortium. We've worked since 2016 on this project. Um, and demonstrated uh, over 50 measures in the five cities. In Stockholm, we've been the largest site in implementation, and I'm going to quickly go through some of those measures in a minute. In Grow Smarter, we have uh, we were coordinator of a project then, three cities, uh, over 40 partners, I think we ended up as, and um, 
12 smart solutions and many more measures uh, and just to distinguish between the two eccentric has been expressly a mobility and transport project whereas growth smart is more of a smart city energy climate and transport project if we go to the next slide uh, in eccentric then we've worked on different themes i'm not going to talk about all of these but i'm going to give you some ideas of how we can work with European calls to uh, introduce smart things of different character. Um, we worked uh, to introduce new uh, methods for parking management in Stockholm in Eccentric. We had an innovation contest where we procured um, an idea uh, and uh, procured services uh, to test the idea. Um, and this has been really interesting using scan cars. Now we have, um, this is a, a car that drives around and monitors how many people are parked uh, in a district to try and ensure that you get both compliance with rules, but then also know where you can remove parking spaces or make park the parking system more efficient. This is the kind of information that you can have on tax, uh, the, the kind of equipment you could have on taxis or you could have at airports or ports or things to, to fulfill other functions. Um, then we have some, we've done some work on cycling. I'll skip that for now. We can talk about that maybe later if we have time. Mobility services then, we've worked with different uh, providers and Ubigo have launched a mobility as a service uh, subscription package for people in Stockholm. This is where you have lots of different mobility uh, options, but you pay for one, uh, one subscription um, and uh, can really have multimodal tra travel. So you're choosing the the uh, type of service that's best matched to the specific transport need you have at that time. Um, that's developing nicely, um, it's really interesting. Uh, then we've also worked on public transport. Um, that's interesting in a different way because we uh, have worked in peripheral areas of the city and we really see uh, such a huge need for public transport in uh, non-central districts. And we've learned a lot. I think, again, some of the lessons we've learned could be applied in other contexts, um, not least um, travel to airports and ports. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, if we go to quickly through the uh, logistics, I'll, I'll talk about, um, because there we've been testing uh, night deliveries using plug-in electric hybrid truck that uses HVO uh, biodiesel on uh, when it's not running on electric. Uh, electricity um, and we also have geofence that vehicle so that we uh, control the speeds um, in the inner city areas. This is a really interesting trial. Uh, the second measure there in logistics concerns um, use of waterways uh, to transport heavy aggregates um, and again it's a really really good way to use waterways so that we avoid having trucks running around the city centre. Um, okay, uh, grow smarter. Um, Grow Smarter was a really big project um, looking at low energy districts, infrastructures, sustainable mobility. There are lots of things that you could call smart uh, urban development in Grow Smarter, um, like traf um, uh, street lights, uh, sensor driven street lights, uh, monitoring of pedestrian flows, uh, smart building management systems to uh, make sure that you have optimal energy use, etc. When it comes to mobility and transport, we looked broadly at these five topic areas, logistics, deliveries, management um, uh, of uh, traffic, and then uh, alternative fuel vehicles and smart mobility solutions. So very similar content to Eccentric. If we go to the next slide, um, I'm gonna just give you a quick example. Uh, we've experimented with different kinds of delivery solution, one of which is an uh, app uh, controlled delivery system where you have a, a delivery room in a house and residents can access that using an app. The delivery com companies can access that using an app. This, uh, may, this has been an interesting test. Um, we see now, since we did this, there are many, many more kinds of solutions like this emerging. Um, if we take the next slide, we can just see some challenges and opportunities related to that. Um, all things we do in these projects by definition are tests 
their innovations. And when we come to responding to climate change, responding to urgent environmental crises, responding to traffic safety in our cities, maybe that's inadequate because we know transport has been the uh, the big policy failure for all of us in Europe over the last 30 years. We have not got our emissions down fast enough and we have lots and lots of things we know work. So we need to move really fast now. We need to do all the things that work and we need to test all of these new things to make sure that we can do uh, more, faster and better. Um, this call then I think provides an opportunity to combine that and to uh, both do things that should be done already in a large scale and then um, accelerate deployment of new innovations. So when it comes to this particular uh, issue of logistics and using smart lock systems on uh, mobile phones, you can use that function anywhere. You can use that in a, in a, at a construction site or in a port or uh, for, for, for deliveries to unmanned units. You can use it in a shopping center you can use it like many people are doing now for delivery boxes on street there's so many things we can do we just have to actually dare to do it and uh, work a bit um, faster and a bit more strategically to to get that um, so i'll stop talking and let Evo ask some questions and uh any, anyone else who wants to thank you okay thank you paul very interesting it gives a very good overview of, of the kind of measures that uh, that you are developing but in, in also in, in general terms that cities are, are looking at when uh, addressing change and, and transition in urban mobility um, the question I have for you is indeed I what what you have raised that uh, the fact that uh, transport is not doing so well overall in, in view of climate and we have this 55% uh, goal by 2030 um, for transport we actually also have goals like uh, zero emission logistics by 2030 uh, coming from the uh, old transport white paper um, so so my question is how, how how do you work with the with the climate ambition of Stockholm how does urban mobility relate mm -hmm. to the um, the climate strategy uh, specifically in view of this fact that that the measures you describe are often uh, let's say three four handshakes away from uh, from from climate impact yeah. yeah one thing to be clear about of course is that we when we don't only talk about climate we talk about everything together we talk about uh, local air quality we talk about local life uh, quality of life we talk about safety we talk about microplastics we talk about everything at the same time and then unfortunately one i think when you move past that strategic bold vision and we have clear ambitions to be a smart city to be climate neutral to uh, or even climate positive to be um to have zero emissions from our own um operations by 2030 and the whole uh, the whole city's transport system by 2040 all of those things are great aspirations and things to work for you have to have those ambitions but then when you move away from that it becomes more complicated, of course, because you have a whole organization and you have a whole uh, society of stakeholders who are trying to do their own things. So um, I don't think we have uh, necessarily um, people putting obstacles up, but it's more that it's complicated to mm -hmm. remove the old obstacles. Everybody wants to make the progress, but we're not. Uh, we have so many split incentives and things uh, that make it difficult to move forward as fast as we need to. Mm -hmm. Then when more specifically uh, in relation then to, to transport, we have a, a, what we call a, a sustainable urban mobility plan um, where uh, we address six, six thematic areas related to mobility from active mobility to logistics. Um, and we also are in a fortunate position to um, be the majority owner of our port so we can also uh, issue directives to the port on how the port should be working. So I think many of the, the things that we want to address in this call are, are, are things that Stockholm already has good plans for or is already working on in some way. But we, we need to do more and we need to do it better. So um, part of that is linking all of these things together. We need to, uh, for example, understand um, the impact of airports and ports in 
producing large volumes of people who then access cities. And we need to make sure then that they can access cities in the right way, uh, using sustainable forms of mobility, that when they're in the city centre, that they're using active forms of mobility, ideally, um, and, and so on. Um, in terms of daily life in Stockholm, we um, obviously promote uh, public transport, walking and cycling. Um, we would ideally like everybody to walk and cycle. Um, we're in the fortunate position where pre-COVID we had about 80% of our peak hour journeys uh, in the city by public transport. Um, now, because of COVID, that's a lot less. Um, mm -hmm. The overall number of journeys is obviously less too. Um, but one really interesting thing is that we've seen uh, even if all modes, uh, or, or most modes have, have decreased, we see that cycling has gone up and we see also that logistics, both vans and trucks have stayed constant. Okay. And we mm -hmm. know that logistics is a really key issue for us to work more in an integrated manner on. And that links directly to the topic of this call, I think in terms of uh, port logistics, air logistics, rail logistics, um, we need to address that matter, that topic in a more comprehensive way. Mm -hmm. So the very last thing I showed there of this idea of how you can get deliveries to work in a more smart way has to be uh, stretched across the whole supply chain. Mm -hmm. Okay, final uh, final question, uh, a brief question also. We, we know Stockholm as a city that has accomplished a lot and you have, for instance, an, a congestion taxi or an, an a front runner when it comes to, to clean vehicles. Uh, you are um, engaged in also a, lot, a couple of really important and, and um, very impactful infrastructure uh, projects um, that will make your city look look differently um what's next on the agenda if, if uh, being a front runner what what do you see you have mentioned urban freight logistics but when it comes to to scaled projects are there are there other big challenges ahead or um plans or wish lists um there, there are yeah there's a long list i'm sure and <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that jumps out uh Right now is something I already mentioned, which is geofencing. I think it, this is something that uh, is a tool the um, the politicians in the city and also the uh, traffic administration is looking quite actively at as a, a way of regulating um, particularly uh, heavy goods vehicles in the city, but then also um, other, other uh, users of road space as to whether that's um, an answer to all the problems I, I, I suspect it's not we have to do so many things uh, con the congestion charge is a great instrument that we have to control the overall level of traffic but it's also an instrument that um, is is not um, it, it doesn't have the uh, profound impact on people who can always afford to pay it's um, something that could be priced in a different way maybe to um to to make it work more effectively and to even reduce traffic more mm -hmm. but that that system is is a national level system so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a, a difficult topic for us as a to address mm -hmm. on our own okay. um, but yeah more work more work everything yeah, yeah. we want to do everything better <laughs> yeah, that's good that's good thanks uh, I, I i think you gave a very good example uh, for the participants um also those who are not so into urban mobility uh, of what cities are, are working on and and the kind of, of scale and ambition you you are uh, envisaging but also the links with uh, uh yeah with the bigger uh, global access uh, or international access through ports and, and airports uh, and I give the floor back uh, to um, uh, to whoever is next in the program. Um, yes, yeah. thank you very much, Ivo. Thank you very thank much, you, Paul, Paul, as well. Yep. This was indeed an thank excellent you. example.
Uh, so yes, we know that uh, airport and port cities as well as regions uh, play uh, a key role in the transition to a smart and sustain sustainable mobility. And in the following session, we will look at innovative solutions and transferable uh, best practice uh, that can foster decarbonization. Uh, and I'm uh, delighted to say that the mayor of Vanta, uh, Mrs. Rita Viljanen, joined us today to tell us more about Vanta's uh, sustainability plans. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor, as well, and uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, it, it's uh, hi to everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, some words about the uh, city of Vanta first, because I'm afraid that you, you are not uh, aware of it uh, totally. So <clears throat> my name is Ritva Viljanen, and I am the mayor of city of Vanta and the vice president of the RRC executive committee since uh, this summer, which I'm very proud of. Uh, you might not know Vanta. The Helsinki airport is located at our city, Vanta. They tell you a little bit fake news when you are landing in, in Finland. They tell you that now we are landing to Helsinki, but actually you are landing in Vanta, totally in Vanta. Uh, Vanta is the fourth biggest city in Finland and the most international one, having 20% of foreigners of our po total population, 236,000. The city consists of seven major districts, of which Aviapolis is the area where Helsinki Vanta Airport is located. More than uh, 1,900 companies are operating in Aviapolis area providing more than uh, 30,000 jobs and the fastest growing business area in Finland, airport city Aviapolis, is situated right next to the airport area. And I'm sorry to say, now it's totally silence. So uh, this is a great problem to hold Finland because this area is producing 4% of our national project and uh, the, uh, the capacity of the airport is only in level 2%. When the hundred is the maximum, now we are on the level two, two percent. May I say uh, the next slide, please? <coughs> it's my great pleasure to present some of our acts and goals towards sustainable city. Cities and urban regions are in crucial position when it comes to controlling climate change and preventing other environmental impacts. The urban structure of cities significantly affects lifestyles and choices, such as mobility needs and transport mode choices, as well as housing types and energy consumption. The city can act as an example or pioneer, as well as share information about best practices. The next. Uh, our goal is to be carbon neutral by city by 2030. Sustainability is one of our core values in the city of Vanta. We are aiming at to be on the forefront of sustainability in Finland. Sustainable well-being for Vanta means no emissions, no waste and no overconsumption in all aspects. Energy production and consumption, urban structure and transport, consumption and materials and res responsible citizens. As we all know, the main goal of a European Union Green Deal is to turn Europe climate neutral by 2050. So one goal, as I said, is to be climate neutral already 2030. We strongly believe that this is attracting uh, attracts investment a lot to Vanta. The potential of giving rise to new businesses and in enhance competitiveness and as well as impact on employment will force and make us more competitive in global market. As an example, we are very proud to tell you that the Vanta Energy, Vanta Energy Company, which is one of Finland's largest city energy companies, is eliminating cargo emissions in their plan, energy production after two years. To <coughs> To meet this target expansion of a waste to energy, plant is needed and to increase the production of renewable wind solar energy and geothermal heat. This means that the use of coal in energy production will end in, uh, in 2022. The city can also control its emissions by its urban structure and mobility solutions. 
of key importance is to engage the residents as well as uh, uh, as well as businesses and organizations operating in the city in developing a sustainable way of life. As a city, we, can su uh, we are supporting actions for sustainability for various reasons. The most important being on ongoing climate change, United Nations SDT agenda is a common agenda for companies, nations, cities, and cities have a ma major role. At least 65% of the SDT agenda is up to cities to make actions, and we are part of it, uh, part of it that uh, process. Uh, the Vanta roadmap to resource region. We have four lines. The first line is energy production and consumption. The uh, production of electricity and heat causes no emissions. Aim is citizens are active in producing their own electricity. And this, uh, this is fascinating how, how many mm, uh, solar uh, walls and roofs we have already, already here. The basis of, of land use and building is resource and energy efficiency. Is efficient. Uh, energy consumption is smart and the buildings are energy efficient. The second is urban structure and transport. Uh, the city structure is mixed and sustainable. This is a, one of the key targets also. And our transport is carbon ne neutral, well working and reasonably pr priced. And now is the uh, also in uh, as in Stockholm, uh, in here also people are not try, trusting so much uh, public transport, and, and it's important that they trust it. And we we after this coronavirus, that we tell it that it is trustworthy and they, you can you can use it. But it's now the level 60% of a normal level uh, people are using our public transport transportation nowadays. The city has prepared the, uh, for the eff effects of climate change and it's using resources wise and natural solutions. Na nature capital and bio biodiversity is preserved and increased also in built up areas. And green structure creates well being and green areas are easily reached. The third one is consumption and materials. We promote circular economy, we are se the sharing economy is established, public procurement and investments are resource efficient, and also food production chain is sustainable. And last but not least is, of course, responsible citizen. The lifestyle of citizen of Vanta is sustainable and based on a good relationship with nature, and participation and commu communality are part of our environmentally responsible daily life and city and local companies are environmentally responsible. These are our targets and uh, we are going uh, fast, go, uh, fast and rapidly go, uh, towards this uh, carbon-free Vanta. The next one. Uh, <coughs> to support and develop public transportation is one key driver towards making our city carbon-free by 2030. We have the best public uh, transport connections in metropolitan area. This is our, one of our key elements in here in Vanta. Traffic connections are being developed uh, further by including Vanta right rail and direct air rail connection from Helsinki Central to airport and rest of Finland. To demise carbon emissions investments in rail connections to the airport has been made. We have already this ring rail, uh, rail line, it's already in use. It goes uh, uh, via airport. And we are building this uh, Vanta fast trail, uh, right, light rail connections. It uh, co connects also to airport. And a, a big, big, massive uh, investment one day will be this air rail. And there is feasibility study going on. It's a tunnel from Helsinki to airport, Helsinki airport. So it, uh, we really need it, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's coming into in the future. It takes about 15 years still. The next one. Uh, I, will I will give you some examples how we uh, as a city engage with our stakeholders. Uh, 
the mess, best one is Avia Network. It brings all stakeholders together towards sustainable future of aviation and related uh, businesses. We, we are doing co-creation. The Avia Network is based in the city of Vanta, uh, which has the only international hub in Finland, Helsinki Vanta Airport. The Avia Network is open for all public, private and third sector actors who has an interest of developing uh, uh, the airport. There is uh, 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 about 40 uh, partners uh, involving uh, this Avia network. There are uh, presentations from ministries, from universities, from other municipalities, municipalities nearby, companies and non-governmental uh, organizations. The next, next one. Our aim is uh, uh, to, to publish a Green Deal manifest for the network. The Green Deal manifest follows uh, the principles of the European Union New Green Deal. And now this is, I think, that uh, after this coronavirus and uh, that uh, that they so silent, they have taken taken a big shock, corona shock uh, against, and um, now it's more important than ever that we can. Uh, have this live again, and uh, this also this part of it, this Green Deal manifest this part of it that you can trust and it's uh, uh, aviation. We will be telling our story as a forerunner in sustainability and diminishing emissions for our target groups and stakeholders, and having a common vision for our future uh, towards the most sustainable future by 2030. Most members of Avia Network have contributed towards sustainability, circular economy, demist emissions. And uh, our target is, is to be the most sustainable airport in the world. So this, not less, only this is good enough. The network is financed by City of Vanta and Helsinki Uusimaa Regional Council. It has been in operation for over three years and it's considered as a part of a city's strategic stakeholder engagement. The chairman of our net, for the network is, uh, it's me, it's, uh, it's a position for mayor of, of Vanta. And uh, if I say more concretely, the stakeholders in Avia Network are the key players in the Helsinki Vanta airport area and aviation, such as Fine, Nordic Regional Airlines, Finavia, Helsinki Regional Transport, hotels, nearby cities, municipalities like Helsinki and Espo, various trade and lobbying organizations, not to forget academia, such as Aalto University and Haka Helia University, uh, ministries and some uh, biggest foundations in Finland are involved in this uh, Avia, Avia network. And uh, next one, the airport operator in Finland is Finnavia. And the airport has been carbon neutral already since 2017. Here are five examples taken from the airport how carbon neutrality is achieved in practice. First in solar power plant on the rooftop. The solar power plant at the airport will be one of the largest solar powers unit, power units in whole Finland and the largest plant located on an airport rooftop in the Nordic countries. Uh, upper and Bruce is run on waste basil, based diesel. The upper and, bu the upper and buses, sorry, I said it wrongly. The upper, and uh, the upper and buses transporting passengers between the terminal and pl uh, plants at the airport run on renewable diesel made 100% from waste. Using renewable diesel cuts down up to 90% of carbon emissions compared to regular diesel. The third one is uh, lightning chains to LED lamps. LEDs are energy efficient and lower energy costs. They also offer other benefits, for example, let's light up instantly and are more durable. And fourth one is wind power and compensating emissions. The airport wind power is purchased from Nordic electricity markets. 
However, as the airport operations still create emissions, carbon neutrality is finally achieved by offsetting residual emissions. And the last one is engage, engaging other stakeholders to reducing emissions. Finia, Finavia also has the responsibility to be aware of how other stakeholders at the airport are acting, are acting in relation, relations to reducing emissions from the operations and advancing sustainable development where possibility. And the last pic, uh, picture, as we know, the city itself can only influence part of emissions. Towards carbon neutral city of Vanta, we must do it together and have, an in, have to engage all parties, citizens, non-governmental organizations and companies to work together to our common goal. We are on the right track and we want to be and we will be the forerunner in sustainability. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mayor Villain, for this excellent contribution. And uh, uh, there, we have a question for you. Uh, participants okay. have made it a question. I think uh, particularly thinking about the Green Deal manifest that you just mentioned, uh, they're wondering, do Vanta and Helsinki Airport envisage the role of Lighthouse in uh, this uh, call? Sorry, sorry uh, uh, yes. the last part. Uh, Again. <laughs> so if you would envisage the role of a lighthouse of uh, being uh, a leader in uh, in this call oh yeah yeah uh, actually actually vanta vanta have done uh, to make a carbon carbon free vanta we have uh, <clears throat> the biggest success in the capital area because in last uh, in last year we uh, we reduced it uh, with 10% of course, we, uh, the energy production is in, in a uh, big deal in this uh, uh, big deal, but uh, uh, the idea is that Vanta Energy is burning all the waste in the south part of Finland. We have uh, imported, we have exported and, uh, our waste to Estonia as well. Now we stop it and we burn it here and we make it uh, uh, new kind of energy by by that, and that's why we have a, uh, we have managed to do do uh, lessen our uh, emissions so so heavily, and uh, that's make one especially one uh, one of the leaders in here. Um, I am also very pleased that Helsinki started it, but they are also reporting this as the key uh, um, target to United Nations. And uh, so it gives a little good push to you that uh, uh, you are connected with international organizations. So this is very important for us and we, we see that this is for future also. Of course, these are key points in this call, uh, waste recycling and carbon neutrality, of course. Thank you very much uh, thank for you. being uh, here today. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so we will go on now and indeed uh, the city can be a pioneer in their decarbonization and we learned that cooperation with all stakeholders including the airport is crucial um, and we have today an example for this cooperation uh, from uh, Cluj um, and uh, we will have two perspectives uh, presented one from the airport and one from the city I'm happy to give the floor to me uh, to professor Adrian Kisla from uh, Cluj University Ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. So from the middle of Transylvania, Cluj Napoca, it's calling. And uh, I will uh, present in behalf of the Avram Anko International Airport, their um, achievements, goals, and uh, also challenges. So as you know, the, um, uh, Romania is one of the first uh, countries with uh, uh, contributions, with important contribution in aviation. Just mentioning the Henri Kwanda, who invented in 19, uh, 1910 the jet planes that we are using today everywhere. So um, during the First World War, uh, yes, thank you, uh, we have also the Air Force, and that's why in 1917 here in Cluj Napoca was also located a military airport. Well, in the beautiful years between uh, the two world wars, so interbellic period, 
the nice life made that here to start a civil airport and in 1933 was the first international flight between Bucharest, Cluj and Prague. But after that, about 60 years or more than 60 years pass until the airport becomes a real international airport. And in 2010, uh, uh, one was the first year with over 1 million passengers to this airport. Last year, 2019, well, was a little bit more. So in the next uh, slide, we we'll see how, a little bit more, next please. The little bit was two, three millions almost, because this airport becomes the first regional airport in Romania with 42 scheduled destinations in 19 countries. And that's why the number of passenger in the airport, it's about six times more than the population of the city. So next, please. We can move the connection between the city and the airport in that it's not the, let's say, the problem of what is first, the egg or the hen. Obviously, it was the airport. It's the same story with the logistics, what was happened in the railway history. So in Maria Theresa time, when the railway comes from Vienna to Cluj-Napoca, then boosts or pop-ups the industry around the city. And the same story was when the airport becomes an international and important uh, uh, location for the flights because the foreign capital, the companies, are not coming just for the first two elements of the city. The university, we are a university city with almost 100,000 students, and the clinics, the medical uh, science here. So they come because they can afford a quick ride by flying every day or several times per day. So the development of the airport was very strong connected with the development of the city and more capital make the airport have more uh, development, more cargoes, because in the real money in the railway and in the airspace, it's coming not really from the people but for the freight. So that's why it's important to look at the both sides of this transportation, not only people, but also freight. So the increase of the number of the connection and destination, of course, the increase of number of the jobs that we have on the airport, around the airport, and in the city connection industries. More jobs make that we are the second biggest airport in the country, after the capital, of course, in each country, the capital, it's on the first place, but we want to preserve at the large distance from the other location, this second place. So this is the role and the consequences of this common development. And if you are looking at the highest paying careers in the city, you see that uh, they are pretty well grouped. So two position for the medical science or medical area, two position for the juridical area, two position for banks. There are about 50 banks in the area and they are not coming if there's not also money inside. And the pilots are on position nine, so it's good also for the connection with the aviation. And for the college professor, as I am, we see that we have also pretty good position because innovation and science make industry to go on. So please, the next slide. In the next slide, you see that uh, the airport, which is also administrated by the uh, county and the county council, starts a process to improve the infrastructure and to go in what is the spirit of the Green Deal. In 2018, so two years ago, in a 12-year project. And what you can see here, it's in the middle the design of this perspective and in the pictures are the actual achievements. And you can see the downside uh, uh, in different color that three phases are promoted by these investments that are coming mainly from the local uh, or the county money, but also connected with projects that can attract different capital. So the new uh, taxiway for infrastructure is planned and started. And this is in connection with a pilot building that can be uh, designed and is designed and conceived as, um, let's say, energy management and fluxes, people, people fluxes management during the pandemic uh, time. 
So it was a quite shock at the beginning, but then you see, we have to cope with that. So we have to create flows of people to make uh, medical uh, protection and then to continue the activity. So this was happened. And then the next phases, which are planned to be done, it's to make this pilot building as a main terminal for the next uh, activities and also to increase the length of the taxi drive and make the connection with the runway and probably to enlarge with the one third the runway. But these are phase number two and number three. So now we have to focus on what is connected or could be connected with the Green Deal requirements. So the next slide, please. And this is the achievement that are already exists. So the road, the county road, is just at the door of the airport. So it's not quite hard to have the connection. But the railway corridor, it's at only a 300 meters from the airport. And it's a crossroad or a cross railroad between Bucharest, the capital, and Hungary, the western uh, neighbor but also between Ukraine and Bulgaria. So this is an important crossing point that must be considered in the future. And it was already considered in the project when it was launched a passenger connection bridge between the railway and the airport. And this is design and it, the plans are ready to be implemented so the infrastructure will come. But also the airport made progresses in producing green energy with a collaboration with Mil Milano Airport. And then it's the airport solar farm, conceived as a pilot that can be scaled or extended to different facilities in the airport, nearby the airport, or even for this new intermodal mobility connection for this that so-called bridge between the railway and the airport that can be combined also as a future solar farm and putting on it also electromobility for the passenger transport or people with, uh, let's say, disabilities or a family with kids and so on, that can be uh, combined the innovative solution with low consumption or uh, green energy consumption with what is possible to be created from the intermodal connection. And um, one of the goals that is started is the airport to have the level one airport carbon accreditation. This means monitoring. So to monitor not only the CO2, but also the um, heat which is lost. Can, uh, there are also um, polluting elements around the airport or in the airport buildings. But in the same time, the plans and the monitoring facilities that was developed mainly for the no noise that was mapping in a project and was know exactly what's happened in and or surrounding uh, uh, in the surrounding of the airports including the city over the city are uh, some flights every day uh, it's not only about monitoring but it's also about continual monitoring and measures what to do to maintain and the facilities that uh, are doing this monitoring, but also to reduce the polluting elements. And this is level two of accreditation. So in parallel, these two elements are start together. I mentioned already about the new taxi runway and uh, also the, about the departure terminal that uh, now it's in a pilot phase and will become a real module or a scalable module in the uh, second phase of development. Everything depends on the financing and on the resources. And um, then it was uh, another interesting thing. The board of directors decided that the companies that are not belonging to the airport, but are acting for and around the airport, need to provide uh, electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles not older than four years. So only these will allow it to operate in and around the airport but not only for the outsiders, for these companies are, is uh, valid the things. Also the airport board of directors decided that the services inside, so the passenger transport, the luggage transport, the firefighters, the service, the uh, runway maintenance, everything to be 
uh, created with the new systems that electro vehicles or hybrid vehicles but this needs a continuous activity it's not apologies. just uh, we have a delay apologies uh, we still have 30 seconds sorry for this 30 seconds in 30 seconds <laughs> you can skip to the conclusions thank you right so mr johan ballandel mentioned some points to be achieved in such things so I think that for the four 12 implemented projects and the four important challenges that intermobility and the green energy uh, production, the airport is already prepared to face all the tasks that are nominated in the Green Deal Guide. So these are the um, potentials to be innovative, sustainable and a healthy airport for itself and for the neighbors in the city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, so it is very interesting to see how the airport adapted to the EU Green Deal requirements and that we also have uh, the, the perspective uh, of, uh, of, of the city right now. And I invite uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bogdan Ovidiovaga to present uh, the, the Cluj uh, city as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I will start by, by saying that um, the municipality has a good connection and strong connection between the, the university and the academics and the, the local authorities and we are supporting directly. And this is one of, one of my roles in this aspect is to support uh, the municipality in the aspect of having a clear transport, uh, a green one from this perspective. If you can go to the next slide, please. What we are facing usually is uh, something uh, what every, every major city is facing. Uh, we're talking about traffic. And on the following slide, you will be able to understand uh, the, the consequences of the traffic and the limitations which we are having due to the fact that one of five people are coming to have a, a place of work and labor inside our community. So basically uh, we have to deal with uh, air noise and uh, pollution and also we have to evaluate the air quality. This is the, the, due to the fact number of private cars which are supporting or are traveling throughout our city. So basically what the municipality decided is to support the private transport, to not support the private transport, but support the, private, the, the public one. If you can go to the next slide and to um, promote uh, several ideas. So basically what we have done in the city is to indulge and to evaluate uh, our task to, to reach by 2030, the, the 100 pure electric transports. We have invested over 100 million euros in public transport fleet, we updated. We are we have been the first city in Romania to have a fleet of 41 electrical buses. We have uh, more than uh, 80 uh, uh, trolley buses and 24 tra trams already running through our city. But nevertheless, it's not. This is only the aspect of, of the fleet. But nevertheless, we have a, a, a smart mobility app, and also we have a, a monitoring approach in order to uh, make a, the traffic as fluent as possible for the public transportation. If you can go to the next slide, please. So the, the whole idea is, of course, support the, the, the public transportation, but nevertheless have the possibility to to indulge and also uh, to have the, give the people the possibility to to make uh, the traveling between the neighborhoods. Uh, on a green environment. So we have the idea of walkable city, we have the idea of, of having uh, e-bikes, e-scooters, and also connections between neighborhood, neighbors. Please, next slide, please. So the idea is to create a walkable green city. So as you can see, uh, part of the historical city has been updated uh, to and give it back to pedestrians and also areas, green areas, not only on the center part, but also throughout the city has have been updated. So we have to integrate the public transportation in together with the, with the personal transport uh, to make it green as possible. Thank you. Next slide. So coming back to the large infrastructure, as you can see, it has been pointed on the map, the location of the airport. So we have 
um, three major important uh, approaches from the city uh, towards the airport. So we have the metropolitan belt, uh, we have the metropolitan train, we have the metro. As you can see, all the dotted lines, whether they are green, whether they are orange, or they are large orange, have been in a close connection to the airport. So we understand the needs um, uh, coming from the airport and, and also uh, the needs of the people living in the city, but also from all the, of those who are coming from the airport in order to reach different locations throughout the city. So we have the Metropolitan Belt, uh, the transport uh, the, for the cargo, and we have the train, which are which, which the, 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 the railway, which is in a close proximity of the airport, and we have the vision of connecting also with the metro. This is, this is on the third phase. Next slide, please. So our vision of the, the university approach uh, coming towards the city was to create uh, an algorithm uh, in order to design and to establish the right um, design and the right uh, economic balance between the needs of the transportation and the, the configuration of the particular uh, electrical buses, uh, trams and trolley buses that we have designed. Next slide, please. So based on our idea, we evaluated and we decided to have the right uh, configuration throughout, the, throughout the, all our network of transport. And we have uh, dedicated uh, our uh, efforts to design um, the tender books and the qualification for, for the public transportation to reach the, the goal of uh, zero emission, but nevertheless to make it as efficient as possible from the energetic point of view. Next slide, please. So based on our approach, we, um, we scaled uh, our vision to our 24 big cities in Romania. So based on our ideas, <clears throat> more than 530 vehicles have been, have been purchased in throughout <clears throat> Romania based on the pilot projects that have been developed in, in Cluj. Next slide, please. So coming back to our, our vision, so we have 41 electrical buses uh, with a project of 22 million euros. 50 new trolley buses, 25 million euros, and 21 trams with a project of 25 million euros. All of them, uh, in, in a certain way, they are uh, somehow connected in order to reach uh, different locations. But nevertheless, the trolley buses and the electrical buses can reach the airport just in time. Next slide, please. So our vision uh, towards the transport through, through the city and directly to making direct connection to the airport it's a scaling up of the existing initiative and use of uh, the modeling and monitoring approaches that we have done so far, and also making an airport car free zone. We have this approach in our heads as well. And also we have the possibility and we are working in, the, in a field on this field to have a dedicated uh, specific uh, uh, lines to uh, making the, the transport from the airport to out the city with just electrical buses. And, uh, next slide, please. And also we have a vision dedicated specific to the airport. So we have uh, now in the process of purchasing uh, a 10 uh, autonomous uh, shuttle buses, which are going to be used uh, uh, specific for the night uh, transports coming from the airport towards the center of the city. And we have our vision is to also to try so to evaluate whether they are feasible to make the transport from the airport to the, uh, the aircraft. And also we have it in our vision from the municipality point of view, um, the possibility to use the fuel cell buses, which are going to be uh, available in, in, in Cluj by 2023. Next slide, please. So the vision uh, to use the autonomous shuttle bus came from the technical university in the partnership with the municipality. So we have uh, the pilot project of line zero. This will be the first line in Romania uh, supported by, by an auto autonomous shuttle bus and we would like to connect it uh, with the airport as well in the following decade. Thank you very much. Next slide. So coming to the conclusions. So Cluj is a smart city focused on innovation. We have the, the decarbonization is our priority. We have a vision to connect the city with the airport. We have the vision of creating the car-free zones as well. So we have a focus on, on evaluating the air quality and the noise related uh, impact. Nevertheless, coming all, evaluating all this, you have seen that Cluj has been um, the, 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 the six finalists of um, the, the, if you can go to back to the, please, the, back to the side. So yeah, as you can see, the Cluj European Innovation Awards, we have been the, within the sixth finalist. Um, so all this coming together, 
the parts is strictly related to our, our vision. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Verga. This was a very comprehensive presentation. Um, we also have today from uh, IANA, the world's uh, leading airport management company, we have uh, Ms. Anna Salazar. And Anna, thank you very much for being uh, here today and you have the floor. Good morning, everybody from IANA, from Spain. Uh, and thank you very much to Alexandra and to RIC for the invitation. Um, I am going to, to make my presentation, which is about the sustainable strategy at IANA Airport. Uh, I am going, uh, in the beginning, I am going to, to show you a slide about what is IANA. IANA currently operates 46 airports of general interest in Spain and two heliports. It also has a present outside Spain through its subsidiary AENA Internacional, which has a 51% majority holding in the UK's London Luton Airport and, has, and also has interest in 12 airports in Mexico, two in Jamaica and two in Colombia. In March 2019, it acquired 100% of the management of six airports in the northeast of Brazil. So we are one of the biggest airport net in the world by, by, by a number of passengers. Okay, uh, our commitment to sustainability uh, is proven through all of these initiatives. First of all, uh, the airport carbon accreditation, which uh, accreditates the carbon emissions of all of the airports of the network, or at least the main ones. Uh, the EU United uh, Global, sorry, the United Nations Global Compact, FTSE for Good, that is, as you know, the stock change index that evaluates the degree of the sustainability of companies and recognizes the good practice of the social, environmental, a good governance fields, and the alignment with sustainable development goals. In AENA, we have been working in the area of protections of our environment for, for years for a large team that watches out the, over the protection and conservation of the environment at our airports under the framework of the quality environment and energy efficiency policy, the policy that it had its first version in 1999. It was in 2018 when AENA's board of director approved AENA's climate change a strategy that is aimed at maximizing energy efficiency and promoting the use of energy from renewable sources for self consumption, as well as the implementation of innovative solutions to reduce, to reduce the company's carbon footprint. As a result of IANA's commitment to sustainability and the, flight, the fight against climate change, we have been valued and recognized throughout 2019 by the Carbon Disclosure Project, CDP, Granting in 2019 the rating Management A, which is the highest level awarded by this organization, placing it among the only seven Spanish companies that have obtained this score and one of the few European airport companies that have this rating. Talking about the current milestones where I achieved, you have here our goals. Thanks to the action carried out in decarbonization in 2019, we met the emission reduction targets set out in IANA's climate change strategy. These milestones which are aligned with the objectives established in current regulation at European and national level and allow us to advance on the path of decarbonization. Here we have the main decarbonization actions executed till now. Uh, first of all, the construction of cell consumption renewable energy facilities, uh, the biggest uh, energy uh, photovoltaic energy plant is Madrid Barajas Airport, uh, and is the largest photovoltaic plant of the IBEX company. The purchase of 100% renewable energy with warranties of origin in all airports of the network, 
the ACA Airport Carbon Accreditation Program for the main uh, airports of the network. Uh, in globally, uh, is uh, signify the 70% of finance total carbon emissions. Energy efficiency actions, especially in lighting and air conditioning. Uh, the installation of a network of electric charging points in car parks for passengers and employees and collaborative measures uh, that uh, improves the efficiency of airport operations, reducing waiting times and polluting emissions, such as ACDM uh, in the three main airports of Aena, or for example, like CDOs. Other, other initiatives are the Handling Emissions Reduction Plan, uh, which uh, consists on the substitution of handling equipment for the less polluting ones to reduce emissions from this activity up to 30% in Madrid and 20% in the rest of the airports. And a lot of initiatives uh, uh, that we have uh, uh, realized uh, in common with the councils, especially Madrid and Barcelona councils, for the promotion of the intermodality and sustainable mobility. Recently, uh, we have defined uh, the AENA's new climate objective. So AENA's commitment has evolved updating its initially established objectives and making them more ambitious and bringing forward in time all the carbonization challenges. The main two goals are carbon neutrality in 2026 and net zero carbon in 2040. So I'm going to explain the most significant action plan to achieve these ambitious goals. First of all, we have the INS photovoltaic plan. Last year, we launched one of our most ambitious projects, INS photovoltaic plan. This project we are, we are already working on will allow us to reach 100% self supply of energy from renewable sources in our airports by 2026. We have a, a planned a production of 950 gigawatts of renewable energy equivalent to the consumption of 280,000 homes per year, an investment of, of more than uh, 350 million euros. This project which will be carried out through a photovoltaic installation in 11 airports of the company with white solar availability is a unique project in the sector, both for the distribution system of renewable energy discharged for the network of 46 airports and for the surface in our facility that will cover more than uh, 7,740 7, hectares. Here we have more significant action planned. Talking about reducing of our scope one, uh, we have, uh, we have established uh, a separation between short-term uh, uh, initiatives and medium-term initiatives uh, that uh, in, in order to, to uh, distinguish the available technologies and the future technologies. In the short term, we have the replacement of diesel for vehicles in boilers and power generators the replacement of natural gas for biogas in equipment, the use of uh, synthetic, synthetic biofuel in vehicles, the replacement of diesel vehicles with electric vehicles, the increase in charging points, big increase, and the strengthening of the electrical network. And in the medium term, we have a progressive change to hydrogen generators, the use of geothermal and irrethermal energy to feed the cold and heat system airports, the replacement of vehicles in hydrogen full cell, and the hydrogen production at the airports. And here we have the most significant of all initiative. It's the, more, the most significant because uh, we, we, we need to make, uh, to work uh, together for the sustainability of the air transport sector, not only for the airports. For the airports. So, Actually, the current volumes produced of SAF are low, as you, as you know. 
uh, maybe it's less than 1% of total jet fuel demand. But these volumes can be substantially increased with coordinated support, including effective policy frameworks and support of airports. Contrary to the ground transport sector, which can be quant used electric energy, aviation has no near term alternative to liquid hydrocarbon fuels because electric commercial aircraft are unlikely before 2040 and hydrogen on 2030. 35, uh, as Airbus announced uh, one week ago. So for aviation, in the medium term, SAF will be the only energy solution to mitigate the emissions growth of the industry. We think that airports can leverage a unique position at the intersection of airlines, fuel suppliers, fuel operators, governments and communities to support the scale-up of SAF. There is no one-size-fits-all solution. The base model needs to be tailored out the, to the regional context. However, we see that successful models require the cooperation of stakeholders from various parts of the supply chain to enable the introduction of staff. This is all. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we are, uh, I am available for your question if you, if you want to make it. Thank you very much, Anna. Indeed, uh, for sustainable development, boosting sustainable aviation fuels is key. And today we also have um, uh, another perspective from uh, Vienna Airport. And I invite Mario Roch, uh, Head of Environmental and Sustainability, sustainability Management, to, uh, to provide us more details. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, uh, also good morning from my side. Uh, due to the fact that we are already behind the schedule, I'll uh, try to keep it as short as possible and ask you to take the details um, uh, from the handout later on. So, um, as uh, we have already heard from Vanta, the times for airports are very difficult at the moment. So, last year we were able to uh, handle about 32 million passengers. The forecast for this year is less than 9 million. So the passenger drop will be about 74, 75%. The movements are uh, about 60% uh, reduced. So you can imagine that we are really struggling at the moment and we really have to fight for every, especially environmental relevant investments with uh, our management. Uh, I will give you a short overview about our environmental management system, our EMAS, our CO2 emissions, the importance of energy savings, and some best practice examples. So uh, the main message from this slide is that the responsibility for the successful implementation of an environmental management system lies with the management board and with the executives in accordance with the line organization of the airport. Yeah? We have appointed an environmental manager. Uh, he contacts the operational management of AMATS. And we have appointed topic authors for specific environmental themes. So, uh, next slide. <clears throat> so, uh, we went uh, through the airport actually, and we have identified what are our inputs like electricity, heating, cooling, fuel, water, and so on, and what are our outputs on the other side. <clears throat> and the result of that, next slide, please. We got, of course, high numbers. Next slide. And then we went into detail, and uh, we have divided it into several scopes. So scope one is uh, all the equipment what we are owning, actually. So it's more or less the cars. Yeah? Scope two is uh, including all the energy what we need to keep our facilities, our terminals and so on running. And scope three is the feeder traffic to the airport and the LTO cycle from uh, the air traffic. Yes. Next slide. And in this picture, you can see, oh, one slide back. On this picture, you can see how relatively small the influence from the airport itself is on our carbon footprint. So it's about 5%. The rest, 95% of an airport's CO2 footprint are related to the LTO cycle. And therefore, I strongly 
um, want to push the use of sustainable aviation fuels because there is the big cake, so to say, where we can really not heal the world, but maybe make it a little bit better. Next slide. I just want to remember or to remind you that the aviation industry is the only sector which has already implemented common international targets. We have this EU emission trading system since 2005. We have Corsia uh, with the CO2 neutral growth from 2020 on, and we have uh, IATA, who is strongly pushing to reduce CO2 emissions by half by the year of 2050. As a member of the European Aviation Association, ACI, we have also signed the res resolution um, Net Zero 2050 uh, with about 200 more airports to become CO2 free by 2050. Furthermore, we have set our CO2 neutrality, neutrality uh, goal um, to become carbon neutral until 2030. We are ACA certify, uh, certified since 2011 and we are currently at uh, level three. And as I already mentioned, we have been uh, EMA certified since 2015. Next slide, please. Uh, and when you have a look on the, on the um, ACA's level, so we are at level three. And what else would we need to become carbon neutral, so level three plus. So our electricity is already 100% CO2 free since 2018. We are at the moment in the conversion uh, to remote heating uh, to become it CO2 free from 2020 on. Um, the conversion of fossil fueled vehicles to alternative fuel types like electricity, hydrogen, natural gas is already going on. So we have really a relatively small amount left. Um, and this is uh, what we could easily um, uh, cover by certificates. But at the moment, we don't want to buy certificates. We want to invest the money on site to increase our energy efficiency. Next slide. <clears throat> on this slide, you can see our CO2 reduction. So from 2011 until 2019, we were able to reduce our CO2 emissions by 57.4%, uh, although the traffic units were, uh, were increasing uh, heavily. Next slide. Here you can see uh, how um, the CO2 emissions are, um, uh, what, what they consist of. So you can see until 2017, there was uh, a part still from electricity. So this part is already uh, missing 2018 and 19 because it's already carbon neutral free. And when you look to the figures for 2019, so there are about 9,000 tons CO2 left from fuels. So we are working on it to uh, increase our e-mobility fleet. And uh, the other one is uh, the distance heat, what we will uh, be able to bring it down to zero emissions uh, by the end of next year. Next slide. So the importance of energy savings, of course, for us as a company is, it's always, uh, it also means financial savings as well. Yeah? Of course, you have to consider it's the handling of AVH of uh, available resources, but the costs are the main drivers, actually, to be honest. Um, of course, we have also some requirements um, when we want to build the third runway. So also in that respect, we have to uh, push a little bit to get our CO2 emissions down. Next slide. Uh, we have already started several years ago and we have set some uh, goals and those goals are meanwhile reached. Uh, so we have set target values until 2022, but we were already uh, able to reach these uh, goals uh, 2019. Next slide. 
So uh, how have we been uh, able to manage it? So first of all, it was the EMAS, the Environmental Management System. We have installed an own department for energy management. Uh, we have uh, fixed about 200 optimizations in the central building control system. We have installed recirculation dampers. We have converted to LED. We have invested money in heat recovery, free cooling, and so on. Next slide. But uh, one very important issue is uh, when you ha have a look on this picture, so the building in front of the tower actually is our office park four. Next slide. The office park was just opened uh, two weeks ago and uh, it's about 25,000 square meters. And we are providing their high performance internet. We have a very attractive and open space design. We are offering in communication zones in the building. There is retail, there is a kindergarten, there is gastronomy and so on. Next slide. And already when we have uh, intended to plan such a building, there was a very strong focus on energy efficiency already at the point of conceptualization. Yeah. Next slide. And the main and core uh, environmental issue in this building is uh, that we are using uh, geothermal energy. So we have uh, done 441 watt piles. Every pile is about 10 to 18 meters long. And using this uh, geothermal, we are able to cover 94% of our annual heating energy consumption of the building and 45% of the cooling energy consumption. So this is something where you really should uh, focus on. Yeah, it's okay. Next slide. There was another uh, project, so to say, we have called it Smart Airport City. And the goal was to increase the energy efficiency um, by uh, running the buildings on a very efficient way, so to say, by automated trending analysis, response to environmental inputs and so on. So this was a consortium of Vienna Airport, the Technical University, and some uh, other companies. Next slide. <clears throat> Next uh, project still going on, it's a, a project period of eight years, is that we call it, so to say, the virtual city. Next slide. Where we are really able to virtualize every building, like this, for instance. Next slide. And uh, where we also have uh, a very detailed look already in the planning phase is how the airflow through the individual zones and floors and rooms in every uh, individual building will be, as I already mentioned, I think several times to be as energy efficient as possible from the very first beginning. Next slide. Immobility of of course, is a, a big uh, team uh, as well. So uh, we have a mobile and stationary power storage units that will enhance efficiency and uh, of course, sustainability of the airport. Project period, four years. Next slide. But e-mobility is always a mixture of several things. As we have to buy the cars, so to say, uh, you have to have a clever charging strategy and we will combine it also with the mobile and stationary power storage units. So it's not only to buy one electric car, so you have to cover the whole range, so to say. We are also uh, put a strong effort on uh, photovoltaic systems. So until 2017, we already had three um, plants, so to say, with an installed capacity of 1,300 kilowatt peak. Next slide. In uh, 2018, we have, uh, and you can see it on the picture to the right, so this is uh, our treatment uh, plant, wastewater treatment plant. So we have also put a, a photovoltaic system there. And uh, 2019, we have uh, installed one more on a multi-store car park. And all of this sounds very, very big and very intensive, but when you uh, count it, just the numbers, so with all these investments, we were just able um, to reach about 1% of our 
total electricity demand. So, so it's really a hell of money you have to invest and all these systems, they have to run for at least 15 years that you uh, can create some uh, money out of it. Next slide. Yeah, the conclusion is uh, definitely in the companies and in your private homes as well. So identify your main energy users, grab the low hanging fruits. Uh, so really invest money in, in, in the cheaper solutions before uh, you really make very uh, artificial projects. Use best practice. So uh, this is also an offer to all the other airports. Um, we are connected worldwide actually, and we are exchanging our best practices as a lot. And of course, as you have seen from my presentation, go for solar energy, go for Geomala Termi. Yeah, that's from my side. Thank you very much. And I hope uh, you could find some uh, interesting information out of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mario. Indeed, this is why we are here today to exchange best practices. And we also have the port uh, perspective today, and uh, we have uh, the, uh, the Mr. Philippe Guillaume from the Maritime Port of Marseille. Thank you very much uh, for your contribution today. You have the floor. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I have the, the heavy, heavy responsibility to, to close uh, uh, the seminar uh, and the webinar just before the lunch. Uh, I hope that uh, I could uh, um, keep you uh, aware uh, during uh, five or, or seven minutes, uh, the time of uh, my, uh, my uh, participation, my intervention regarding the, the contribution of the port uh, to the uh, green transition. Uh, thank you, thank you to, to invite us. Uh, I have no, no slide, uh, just uh, I put some ID on a, on a paper and uh, I will uh, be uh, very uh, uh, happy to, to, to answer to, to your question if you have. Uh, my name is Philippe Guillaume, I'm working for, for the Port of Marseille. I'm in charge of uh, economic intelligence and uh, international European projects for the port. And uh, in this perspective, uh, I'm in charge with uh, a team project, uh, inside the team project, uh, to, uh, uh, to prepare the application of the Port of Marseille for the, uh, the, the call uh, Green Deal H2020. H, uh, so uh, that's why I, I could, uh, I, I accept the invitation of the organization to talk about uh, the role of the port uh, in the, the green transition. Uh, and you can see, you could see uh, in a couple of uh, minutes, uh, you could see uh, 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 the role uh, that we can, uh, we can uh, play uh, towards our uh, main lines of the, our application. Um, by nature, a port, when you, obviously, yeah, when you talk about a, a big port, a port of the size of the port of Marseille, one of the, the main, major ports in Europe, uh, a port by nature is at the crossing of many things. And uh, at the beginning, in first, the port uh, is at the crossing of trade flows. But now, ports have become multimodal logistic platform object, subject, and tools of the green transition. Port are the place, and my port is the place, where you can see directly, and in a very, very concrete way, the passage from the brown economy to the green economy. So there, is, there are many, many, many things happened in the port where you can see that you pass from the old economy, a very, very carbonized economy, to the new economy with circu circular economic project, with uh, transition project, with green project, with deco decarbonized project. Uh, the list is too exhaustive. 
to, to be presented here. But uh, you can believe me, and I, I invite you to, to visit uh, uh, our port and uh, uh, beginning by our website to see how is it possible. Uh, so that's why we decided with the Port of Marseille to, uh, to apply for the Greedy National Bank call uh, lead, launched by the uh, European Commission. And uh, I'm going to, to explain to you our main uh, objective in this, uh, in this call. This call is dedicated to the research and development uh, for projects with uh, a TRR superior to six, uh, time of readiness of the project uh, uh, superior to, to six. And uh, so in this, uh, in this call, we want to, to promote uh, smart and uh, uh, smart and uh, no, I'm sorry, a smart and sustainable innovation uh, in organization, business models, technology, in order to reconcile uh, economic and environmental um, performance of the port, uh, of the port ecosystem, and uh, in the service of uh, uh, territories and pe people. Uh, like this, we, you, you could achieve uh, a tribal objective people, planet, and performance. Because now we're sure that our own performance pass through a better performance for human resources, for people, and uh, as well for uh, the planet. Uh, to come back to my point, our application for the HVMN, uh, more specifically, we uh, we will address uh, three areas. The first one is the management of the energy flows in the port. Uh, it's a critical point for, for the port now, uh, a key factor of success. Uh, energy flow, electric, uh, especially, how to produce electricity in uh, the different uh, points of the port. Uh, the second point is logistic flows, uh, very, very important. And now, especially for, I give you an example, especially for uh, a port like uh, the port of Marseille, uh, the question of the place and the role of the port in the urban logistic is crucial. We are close, very close to the port, and we have space to organize, um, uh, can I say that, uh, transformation between the the classic logistic for the urban logistic. Organize the distribution of the goods and sometimes of the people uh, to, uh, for, for the city. So uh, logistic flows is very, very important for, for port. And the third area uh, that we will address uh, is uh, knowledge flows. Knowledge flows, a very, 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 very important thing. It's not a surprise for you because as, I'm, uh, as I am the, the responsible of the intelligence economic for me, uh, the management of the knowledge is so important for the port to decide where you, you have to go, where you have to, uh, uh, to develop your activity. So it's very, very important uh, at this point. So this is uh, the three uh, main area uh, that we will address uh, in our application. And we, we are going to, to build a consortium and we, at, we tend to address the production, development, management of renewable energy and logistic flows within and outside the port area in a smart approach that aims at developing more efficient sustainability, sustainable and economically attractive activities. Our overall objective is to promote positive externalities of the port activities to facilitate the ecological transition of the European territories. As I said before, performance, planet, people. And uh, uh, the general ambition is to demonstrate port of the future by supporting the, the development of innovative solutions, technologies, and concepts that are sustained by sound business model and partnership. It's very important 
because all this uh, project, all this development need to have a sound business model to be developed uh, after uh, the, the time needed to, uh, uh, to the, the, the first step of the development uh, is very important for them. I give you an example, the Port of Marseille uh, provide a piece of its land, very important land. Huh? We have two, uh, 10,000 hectares. Uh, it's uh, uh, bigger uh, than uh, the, the city of uh, Paris. So you can imagine it's a very, very large part. And we, 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 we provide a part of these spaces uh, to the development of a uh, project in uh, the economic uh, circular uh, field. And uh, the, the land uh, provided uh, is very important to develop this industrial project. And if they succeed in the first step of the development, they could uh, change a pass in the Champions League of the uh, 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 industrial project in the inside the port so we we have this uh, function inside the port to help the development of sound business model and to let the time to uh, some very smart intelligence uh, smart and industrial uh, project to develop this is very important uh in summary just uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, just to give you some uh, uh, a more precise idea of uh, what we uh, we are going to develop uh, in this uh, in this uh, application. Uh, when I talk about energy flows, I talk about obviously onshore power supply uh, for passenger ferries, cruise ship, rural vessel, uh, and the questions will be what what is a reasonable production cost of the electricity? Uh, how should it be delivered to the ship owners? Blah blah blah, and all this kind of, of question. Uh, other question will be the hydrogen production and distribution, with many questions uh, that we have to deal with because uh, we uh, it it remains many many uh, a shadow zone uh, for the development of hydrogen, and we want to address uh, this kind of uh, a question. Uh, we will have. Uh, uh, question uh, about distribution of uh, alternative fuels. Uh, for a long time, we we talk about uh, uh, very much and sometimes too much uh, LNG. And uh, in the port of Marseille, we have two uh, terminal uh, of LNG. So we we are going to develop this uh, this possibility and these uh, services for 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 our clients. Uh, okay, this is one, two or three examples of, uh, of the main direction of our application. And uh, for the logistic flow, we are, we are going to, to tackle some, uh, some question like uh, eco-piloting of, uh, of ships in the port and river zone. Uh, we are going to, uh, to, to try to optimize uh, freight and passenger flow via uh, CCTV on the port, how we can use the CCTV to help uh, better management uh, of uh, this different uh, flow via uh, artificial intelligence and blockchain, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I saw you, Alexandra. So if uh, I saw you, uh, it means that I overpass my time. Uh, so uh, it's always a pleasure to see you, Alexandra, but I see that is not... Uh, is not for good news for me, so I'm going uh, right to the, my conclusion. And uh, again, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, feel free to to contact me via Alexandra to uh, to 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 um, to know more about uh, the life of the port of Marseille, uh, Marseille and its role in the green transition. Thank you again for the invitation, and uh, uh, have a nice day uh, for all. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Philippe. You had indeed a very difficult job. You had to summarize and to bring the port perspective today. This was excellent. And thank you very much for that. Let's please keep in touch.
Um, of course. So now I will uh, I, I I will open the Q and A session. Um, I invite. We still have uh, the commission here. Wana Bodron kindly stayed with us uh, until the end of the webinar. If you have uh, further questions, please do not hesitate. Uh, maybe in the meantime, while you're thinking about questions, um, I, I will uh, I will uh, take the floor and uh, ask uh, one from my side. Uh, so I've seen, I've noticed that today energy and energy efficiency were keywords. And uh, the big question is hydrogen or biofuels. Uh, what is the future of energy? Uh, and uh, I believe that, well, uh, feel free to take the word, but maybe Anna Salazar from IANA could, uh, could give us uh, a short answer. Thank you very much, Alexander, for the question. Uh, I think the, the biofuels for aviation are the future with, without any doubt, because is, is the only way to achieve the, the carbonization of uh, the aviation and we, we will uh, be obligated to reduce the emissions uh, in order to comply the, the framework, the regulatory framework. So we, we must go in this direction. Uh, and uh, we, we must uh, not only develop the uh, sustainable aviation fuel, but also we, we must uh, continue in the, in the um, in the, the investigation and, or the maybe the resources the, the resources of the in the investigation uh, innovation and development uh, of other products like hydrogen I think the hydrogen is uh, for sure the future of aviation and uh, maybe the future of the of the uh, road transport too. Uh, I I am convinced, and uh, everyone, uh, the board of directors here in Aena are convinced too. So we are uh, participating in a, a lot of uh, projects to develop these uh, two products, or to to uh, make consortiums with uh, technology company and with airlines, because we think uh, we we have uh, right now we have the conditions to um, to give an, a big impulse, a, a great impulse to the investigation, uh, to the development uh, for these products. Maybe the okay. COVID has, uh, has gave us uh, a lot of uh, terrible things, uh, the reduction of traffic and uh, the, of course, the health consequences. But we must uh, take an opportunity for the in the COVID to to make this impulse to these uh, lines. Great, thank you very much, Anna, for this answer. This is very helpful. Um, and today we have went quite into detail in the EU Green Deal call. And um, I was wondering right now, since we still have one with us. Uh, what about Horizon Europe? Uh, when will it be published? And um, will we have the same opportunity to, uh, to uh, provide our feedback? Will there be a consultation? Hi, Alexandra. You asked me a question to which I don't have a precise answer, uh, but I can share with you, I don't know if I can share with you the indicative timeline for the Horizon Europe. Uh, if I share screen, I have just one slide. So I think it's much easier if anyone is uh, following the same. Yes, please. Yes, of course. You, you can uh, share uh, your screen. Uh, do you see it? Yes. So this is mainly, I mean, this is mainly for the cluster five in which we are involved, but this will be uh, extended to the whole Horizon Europe, of course. There have been consultations starting in 2019 and uh, we are here, uh, where are we? <laughs> we are somewhere here in negotiation with the Council and the, um, uh, and the European Parliament. And we're expecting to launch it, of course, uh, in the first uh, quarter of uh, 2021, but we don't have yet a precise date for that, unfortunately. Once I'll have it, uh, I'll get back to you. And will be, of course, published. In any case, I wish I could uh, say about it 
in any case, this is already useful. And uh, we'll, of course, uh, we, we would be delighted to find out more. But in the meantime, this will do. Um, and um, I'm wondering if there are any other questions from the audience. Uh, otherwise, I know there are speakers uh, committed to, uh, to uh, answer your questions after the webinar as well. Uh, and for your inf information, uh, we will distribute the presentations uh, after, after the webinar, as well as the list of participants. Uh, most of you asked for it. And this webinar was recorded. So um, uh, you will also have a copy of it. Um, so I don't see any other questions. I hope this is a good sign. Anna, means that, uh, yes, yes, please. I have a question for Anna Salazar about biofuels uh, in Europe, what sources for biofuels we will have? Because for long haul aircraft, there is the only solution, biofuels, indeed. We may talk about uh, electric aircraft, hydrogen aircraft for short haul, but for long haul definitely is biofuel is the only solution. What can we do in Europe? Because we are limited for feedstock, we are limited for solutions, synthetic fuel is still uh, at the research uh, site. So what is Diana doing for this? Diana is working in a consortium uh, for, the, um, for the manufacturing of uh, stuff produced uh, from waste. Uh, we think that is the best solution because we solve two problems. And we, and we, Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And we uh, introduce the circular economy into the manufacturing of SAP. So uh, we, we are, uh, I th we think we are, we are working in a sustainable line because we, we uh, have more and more waste each day. So yes. maybe it's, a, it's the best solution. Yes, we think so. The local based solution that I see decarbonizing Europe, not only for radiation, for different other sources for energy. Thank you. Uh, thank you to both of you. So indeed, uh, I, I, uh, I think this is echoed also by the presentation of the mayor of Vanta. Uh, she said something similar as well about recycling and as well, uh, uh, yeah, about waste recycling. Um, and um, so I believe that if there are no longer questions, uh, we can resume. Uh, we will send you all the information. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you to our speakers uh, for their uh, comprehensive presentations. This was excellent. And uh, of course, let's keep in touch. Good luck with the Green Deal and uh, hopefully Horizon Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Have very much. Day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye.